नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अवर डिस्कशन ऑन अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज वर्क सिस्टम डिजाइन सो आई वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू टू दिस कोर्स एंड फॉर दोज हु हैव रजिस्टर्ड फॉर द कोर्स आई कैन एश्योर यू दैट इफ यू गो थ्रू द कोर्स इन अ रिलीजियस मैनर इफ यू ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड द बेसिक कंसेप्ट ऑफ द कोर्स यू विल इवन बी एबल टू अप्लाई दीज प्रिंसिपल्स इन योर डे टू डे लाइफ इवन द स्मॉल एलिमेंट्स ऑफ वर्क दैट वी डू डेली विल ऑल्सो गेट बेनिफिटेड इन टर्म्स ऑफ इम्प्रूवड वेज एंड मैथड्स ऑफ डूइंग द वर्क ऑल्सो वी विल बी एबल टू सेव टाइम इन अवर डे टू डे रूटीन इफ वी फॉलो द फंडामेंटल प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ डूइंग वर्क सो दिस सब्जेक्ट more or less will be applicable not only from the shop floor point of view or from a service industry like hospital or restaurant point of view but it has a universal application it can be applied to our daily life also for example now i am recording this session the principles of work system design are equally relevant in this scenario also how they are relevant because i am an individual maybe i am an operator on a shop floor or in this particular studio i am a speaker i am a teacher then there is a system we have a system to help me with what i want to present then there is a recording device which is recording the whole uh, discussion that we are doing also there is a lighting arrangement there are air conditioners which are keeping the room comfortable in a comfortable environment so this is a complete system a person is interacting with the system and both are leading to production of some work in this case it is a production of a video content for a particular course that in our case is work system design so current work that is being done is the recording of a lecture for the work system design so that is the work being done but how this is being done i am doing some work so i must feel comfortable while doing my task the system must facilitate my work so therefore the principles guidelines rules regulation theory are not only related to industry only but they are related to our daily life also and therefore you will enjoy the course it is less theoretical more practical oriented course and we will see that how we can use the principles of work system design in various spheres of industrial application in various spheres of our day to day applications in various spheres of service sector industry so we will try to take certain examples wherever possible to apply the concepts of work system design into actual application so let us now try to see that what is the work system design now work system design deals with the systematic examination you can see on your screen the systematic examination so it is a scientific technique it is not a philosophical technique in this we will see we will learn the different graphical tools the different techniques which will help us to represent the current method of doing the job or the work and then what we need to do we need to find out use our creative skills use our mental faculties to find out the best ways of doing that work so the current method may be something which our forefathers have developed which may be best till today but with the advent of technology with the advent of additive de assistive devices we can certainly find out better methods of doing the work so the work system design deals with the systematic examination of the methods of doing work now why do we need to examine them we need to examine them with an aim of finding the means of effective and efficient use of resources so time is an important resource our energy is an important resource so we must ensure effective and efficient use of resources and setting up of standards of performance for the work being carried out so the standards of performance may be in terms of time that is required to perform that task so we need to examine the current method of doing the work in order to ensure efficient and effective use of our resources as well as we need to find out that what must be the standard time required for performing the task using the best method of doing the 
work or the task. The systematic exa examination of work involves what is done, we need to ask this question and how it is done, the method of doing the work as well as what is the standard time to do the work. So, we need to find out the answers to these questions and these are not the only questions for which we need to find out the answer. We need to find out the answers like what else can be a better method of doing the job, who else can perform the job in a better manner. So, there can be a large array or a large list of or a long list of questions which we must put while we are analyzing the work or the questions to which we must try to find out the answers regarding the work that is being done. And if we are able to creatively analyze the work, we will definitely be able to find out a better method of doing the work. Now, this is required. Why do we need to understand the concept of work system design? We need to understand this because to have an in-depth analysis of all the elements factors, resources and the relationships among the various elements affecting the efficiency and effectiveness of the work being studied. Now, these are the four important keywords that we will be using quite often that is what are the various elements of the work system, the factors affecting the performance of the work system, the resources required to perform the work as well as the interrelationship among all these three parameters. So, all these things we need to take into account. Why? Because we need to ensure the effectiveness and efficiency of the work being carried out. Now, suppose I have to record this session which is going to be a 30 minute session precisely and I take maybe complete day to record this 30 hours uh, 30 minutes of recording or to record this 30 minutes of discussion, I may not be very very efficient and effective. So, maybe I am using maybe 8 hours of the studio time for recording a 30 minutes video, maybe I may not be one among the favorites among the recording people or uh, people who are responsible for doing the recording. But if suppose I have to record a 30 minutes video and I am able to do it with all cuts and stoppages in between or uh, with all kinds of uh, factors beyond the control of the speaker as well as uh, the recording team. If I am able to do it in 35 minutes, I will say oh, I have efficiently utilized my time. I was effective, I was able to deliver the content that I have planned for 30 minutes during the specified time only. So, therefore, it is important that the elements like in this particular process, the elements may be the air conditioning system, the lighting system, the recording uh, equipment, the uh, loud speaking equipment. So, all equipment, the person, they must interact, the relationship must be such that the time is utilized properly, the work is done in the most efficient and effective manner. So, that is the basic purpose of understanding the work system design. Now, we will try to uh, learn the various parameters, the various techniques that will help us to improve the effectiveness and efficiency of the work being done. And here you can see this is one schematic of a person who is standing and performing his task. This is the actual representation of a person performing a task. How to design? What must be taken into account? in context of the person who is performing the task. What must be taken into account in context of the machine which is being operated by the person. So, there will be some parameters which will affect the machine, there will be some parameters which will affect the person. Similarly, in this case also another this is a example of a shop floor where a person is performing may be assembly operation. So, here we can see a person who is performing. This is another work system in which the person is doing a work on the computer. So, this is again an example of a work system and you can see there are so many elements to this work system. So, this is one variable that what must be the height of the chair on which the person is sitting, what must be the table height which must be taken into account, what must be the viewing distance which is ideal for a person who is working on a computer system. So, we need to find answers to all these questions and what will help us 
the theory behind the work system design the principles which lead to the work system design will help us will guide us will give us lot of information which will help us to design such type of work system so here two examples are given one is from a shop floor this one can be from an office where a person is performing a task on a computer now how to design these work systems there are different elements of the work system then there is a interaction among the various elements of the work system now how this has to be taken into account is an important thing which we will try to learn which we will try to discuss during this course so we we will see that how the course will be uh, organized so how it is organized which is, it is given on your screen you can see we will first try to see the concept of productivity then we will try to see work method study followed by work measurement and then ergonomics why i am putting the question mark because most of you may be having the basic information about these terms or about these uh, definitions of these particular words but then in this course we will try to go beyond the definitions we will try to go to the next level of understanding that is the application of method study for solving certain problems in today's session i will try to give you very few examples just to introduce the concept of work system design and these four major modules that we are going to cover so in productivity we will try to see what are the causes of low productivity how we can measure the productivity how we can improve the productivity so productivity will be an important topic why because in order to improve our productivity we need to do the method study we need to do the work measurement we need to do the ergonomic study of the work system because we want to improve the productivity of our organization so when we have to improve the productivity we need to follow method study we need to conduct work measurement as well as we need to design the system in such a way that the person feels comfortable he does not have a feeling of fatigue or he does not feel tired when he is performing his task he feels safe while performing his or her task so we need to understand the safety aspects we need to understand in general the ergonomic aspects of doing the work and therefore these four modules will guide us will orient our thinking in the direction of finding new and new better and better and even the best methods of doing the work so each one of us is involved in one or the other kind of work where always there is a improvement certainly there is a scope for improvement in the type of work we are involved in so how we can improve our efficiency how we can be more effective how we can be more productive that we can always find out using the basic concepts of work system design so let us see each one of these modules one by one so in productivity this module will highlight the importance of productivity as one of the important measures of evaluating the well being of an organization so if the organization is productive it is skillfully converting the inputs into the outputs and the outputs are giving good revenue for the organization the economic health of the organization will be good so the importance of productivity as a measure of evaluating the well being of an organization we will try to understand and the importance of work study as a tool of improving productivity will also be highlighted now we need to study uh, the work or we need to as we have seen in today's session only we need to scientifically examine the work in order to improve the work in terms of effectiveness and efficiency and therefore we will establish the importance of method study so here two terms have already come into picture the method study and the work measurement already we have seen these two terms so the importance of these two terms as a tool for improving the productivity will also be highlighted now in case of in try in uh, our endeavor or in our quest to understand the concept of productivity we will see uh, the productivity causes of low productivity the productivity measurement model the productivity measures what are the measures of productivity and productivity improvement techniques so in order to understand the concept we will develop our discussion 
based on these four or five important parameters that are the four or five important directions which are listed here. So, causes of low productivity, productivity improvement techniques, productivity measurement models and productivity measures. Now, the once we understand that the productivity is an important parameter for each and every organization and there are certain causes for low productivity and there are certain suggestions already established based on the data available for various companies which can help the companies to improve the productivity. We will try to understand the tools and techniques that can help to improve the productivity and one of the most important techniques is the method study. Now, what is method study? So, in method study we will consider the various techniques of work study and their selection as well as outline we will try to outline the phases of conducting a work study. So, the various stages step by step procedure to conduct a work study that we will try to understand. The various techniques of constructing graphical aids for representing a process and an activity. Now, there are different graphical tools that are used in method study such as the outline process chart, you can have a flow process chart, you can have a multiple activity chart, you can have a SIMO chart depending upon the level of analysis that we are going to undertake. So, there can be uh, other, another one which can be man machine chart. So, you have different graphical tools and we will learn about each and every graphical tool with the help of an example that this type of tool can be used or this particular graphical tool can be used for solving this type of problem. So, we will try to see that how a process can be represented and today only we will see one such example. The examination and analysis of the graphical tools is also considered in order to develop a best method of doing the work. So, what is our target? Now, suppose there is a uh, work material or there is a raw material which is entering an industry and then it is traversing a particular path before being converted into the final product. Now, we can make, we can depict this whole sequence of operations in one chart and then we can try to understand that what can be done in order to improvise this work being done or in order to improvise this particular segment or this particular uh, we can say shop floor of the work being done. So, maybe we can try to do the relay out or we may try to relay out the machines or equipment that are being used and we may try to find out that the new layout is giving us better efficiency and effectiveness. So, we will try to take one example. There are uh, other graphical tools also. I have not written all of them. Maybe string diagram is another important tool which has just uh, happened to me or thus just uh, came to my mind related to the layout design. So, when we are trying to re redesign the layout string diagram helps us in a much better manner. So, we can see that uh, different recording techniques will be followed. So, here we can see we will be uh, trying to discuss the charts based on sequence. I have already told the raw material entering and then moving through the shop floor before being converted into a final product. This is sequence has to be followed. So, there are certain charts which are based on the sequence. Charts are based on the time scale that there will be a time scale and then the different activities being done by the left hand, different activities being done by the right hand and in between we have a time scale. So, there will be charts that are based on time scale. Now, what are these charts? The question marks depict that there are certain charts which are based on sequence, based on time scale, based on the movement. So, we will try to learn all these charts. So, Whenever we draw a chart, there are two things. First is the current method. So, whatever method is being followed, we try to focus on that method and then try to see that the work has been depicted or the method has been depicted or the various stages of work have been depicted properly. So, there is a current representation of the method being followed. Then we try to use creative skills to find out that what are the areas or of improvement or what are the 
uh, operations which can be combined together which what are the operations which can be completely eliminated so all those things have to be taken into account and then we try to find out the alternatives maybe three or four and then we try to depict those alternatives again with the help of the same chart and then compare the current method and the alternatives and then we will be able to find out the one best method which is having less number of operations which is consuming suppose less time less manpower is involved so sometimes when the operations become less the effort also becomes less the system becomes more responsive it becomes more efficient and as well as more effective so we will try to see that in this particular current method these are the scope for improvement and if we have these alternatives we, we, we can easily find out a better method of doing the work so we will use the charts based on the application not depending upon the type of work being done depending upon the type of analysis that we want to perform we will select a particular graphical tool or a recording technique and then use it for finding out the best method of doing the work now here you can see this is one method of doing a work it is a flow process chart of inspecting and marking the incoming part so here there is a truck from where the material is coming and this is the path being followed by the work piece uh, the material before being stored in the bins so there is a receiving bench here there is a marking bench here and there is a inspection bench here so inspection and marking are the two important works being done so the material is coming it is re coming to the receiving bench it is inspected then it is marked and then it is stored so this is the one flow of pro flow process chart depicting the movement of the material on the shop floor before being stored now what can be the improved method that we will try to understand trying to improve this particular work being done on the shop floor so this will be one uh, introductory part that such type of problems we will solve during our course then the third module is the work measurement why do we need to do work measurement we need to find out that how much we can produce what is our capability in terms of the labor in terms of the machines in terms of the overall system and to establish the expectations now suppose i have to assign work to 10 different workers how i will assign the work i must have a scientific background that each person will be able to perform this much amount of work or each person will will be able to produce 200 components in a 8 hour shift from where do i get these numbers that 200 components in a 8 hour shift so this we will be able to find out using the concept of work measurement we will be able to scientifically establish a standard time for performing a particular task so work measurement will help us to assess our capabilities now suppose we find out that an experienced skillful worker will be able to produce five parts in one hour and then he will be in the industry for eight hours so if suppose he produces 40 parts in a day or in a eight hour shift we can very easily assess the overall capability in terms of machines and manpower that we possess or that we have so we can use the work measurement for assessing the capability we can use the work measurement for establishing our expectations so this module deals with the calculation of standard time calculation of standard time for performing the work using the techniques of time study so we will see different techniques of time study this is what uh, is related to the allowances which help us to build up the standard time our target is to find out the standard time which is a question mark how to calculate that so for that we require normal time we require the allowances and these are the various types of allowances that are given to a worker for calculation of the standard time so this uh, allowances we will try to understand that what is what are special allowances such as policy allowance rework allowance personal needs allowance basic fatigue allowance so there this is just one example the depiction high school and college student this is uh, how much money the parents feel must be given to the students for their day-to-day -day expenditure that is for lunch 
and then for average for photocopies school requirements so all this is uh, just one allowances which are given to the work uh, to the students so here we are talking about the allowances which must be given to the worker now suppose if if i am given a uh, complete booking for the studio for 8 hours it may not be possible for me to record 16 sessions of half an hour each why because there are uh, limitations of speaking continuously there are limitations of human body there are limitations of different types i may need to take some rest sometimes i may like to have a cup of tea or i may like to drink a glass of water so there are these allowances which must be given to me so if i have the recording uh, time available or the whole studio booked for me for 8 hours I may never be able to record 16 sessions of half an hour each so therefore whatever are the allowances those will be used to calculate that what is the standard time for recording a lecture of 30 minutes duration so that way that may if 30 minutes of actual content is being delivered the standard time may come out to 35 minutes or 40 minutes or 45 minutes so we will try to learn how to calculate the standard time and finally the fourth module will deal with ergonomics so the last module considers the concepts and principles of ergonomics for designing a work system the concepts and principles of ergonomics for designing a work system which gives better productivity and also a system that provides a comfortable and safe working environment for the worker so there are few things few terms which are very very important that is the comfortable and safe working environment moreover the concepts and principles of ergonomic for designing a work system so if you remember in the very beginning today we have seen a professional who is working on a computer system now that is a work system that needs to be designed we need to fix up the distance between the eyes to the computer screen we need to fix up the height of the chair on which the person is going to sit we need to fix the height of the table we need to fix the height of the key table in which the keyboard will be placed we need to decide where the mouse must be placed so whether it must be at elbow height or it must be at a slightly higher height than the elbow so what must be the angle of the thighs when the person is sitting what must be the angle between the thigh and the leg when the person is sitting whether the person's feet must be on floor or they must be at an angle so all these parameters all these values have to be found out by the work system designer in order to make the work system comfortable safe for the worker who is performing the task now this is related to one particular example only where a person is sitting in an office and working on a computer now you can yourself imagine the worker working on a shop floor where he is doing a heavy work where physical effort is required so how we can design the work system in such a way that the worker feels safe he feels comfortable he does not have a feeling of fatigue he does not get tired too easily and he enjoys performing his work so we need to ensure as engineers and managers that we provide such type of a system to a worker that he enjoys performing his work so with this we conclude the introductory function or oh sorry the introductory session for our course on work system design and subsequently we will try to cover all the four modules in as much detail as possible during the course and the focus will be on application based learning with the help of certain examples so that the things become ingrained in our thought process and wherever some work is being done immediately a thought must cross our minds that can there be a better method of doing this work. Thank you.